back with Bishop Mark Andrus. He was just finishing a story about income inequality, and we, we do want to let you finish that story. Well, so my basic yeah. point there is that uh, people are living in cars where they uh, pay somebody in a yard to be able to use bathrooms t because they're low-wage yeah. uh, workers, and otherwise they'd be commuting two hours, up to two hours each way, on low wages, so that it pushes them further yeah. down and drives the income inequality gap even further. Yeah. And th this is the cost of what's happening in our city. It's driving people out uh, of all kinds. Uh, we lament our public school. It's not because we don't have good teachers, right. but think about what they have on their backs in terms of uh, moderate wage people uh, who have to commute long distances to teach in our public schools. So I'm, I'm interested how you as a bishop can influence either your priests that uh, serve under you or serve alongside you and those parishes to address these public issues. Do you do it through your teaching, your preaching, your leadership? How do you all that, yeah. um, but they're there. As I was saying, you know, this church, this diocese has been here for a long time, and these have been, uh, people have stepped into roles that where people have been there before them, yes. uh, who have held great values uh, in terms of solidarity with neighborhoods and with the, um, mm. a kind of generosity, the word I've used before. Um, so I don't have to do a lot in that way. They're, they're, they're there. Um, I think a missing thing in our church, and it may be true for Lutherans, is advocacy. Mm, say we, more. We have the ability to influence from our position uh, as, as faith uh, people, as citizens, too. Uh, public policy, we don't use that very much. When I was a, a chaplain at a boarding school, um, it was a largely conservative uh, population. The mm -hmm. parents were mostly Republicans, and kids believed what their parents believed. But I got an Amnesty International chapter started there, and, and a group of students would faithfully gather and write these letters all over the world and including to our own government about human rights. Um, so you have, are you bishop for life? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, until we have mandatory retirement at 72. Okay, so you finished 10 years. You have 10, let's think, let's project into the next 10 years as yeah. we conclude our show. What do you hope to accomplish in a brief response? Well, the, um, the revitalization of our churches, uh, they are wonderful, um, but we face decline like all of the main world religions. Um, and we've, in the Diocese of California, we've, we've stopped the decline, uh, but mm -hmm. we, we're not to the thrive part. Um, Archbishop <laughs> Ndengani, who yeah. succeeded Desmond Tutu uh, in South Africa, said to me that the best um, deliverer of social good is the local church because in a village in Africa and think about a neighborhood in San Francisco or yes. the Bay Area there may not be a government office but there's always a church there so these churches are lights they're beacons of, yes. of good in neighborhoods if if I let as the bishop if I don't support them and give them all the tools necessary to really shine and a light goes out, um, it's very hard to restart it, to, to get it back again. So we have, uh, we've stabilized many of our fragile congregations, um, and now it's Thrive Time. We look forward to watching and supporting you and your leadership for the next 10 years. I want to thank our guest, Bishop Mark Andrus, for coming on Mosaic, for being here, and the guests here this morning. Thank you so much.